There are many iconic off-road races around the world, but none that can call themselves the Great American Off-Road Race. It's a week-long celebration that is really the perfect dichotomy of the brutal and arid desert of the southwestern U.S., coupled with that glitz and glamour of the world-famous Las Vegas trip in Sin City, Nevada. Over 40,000 fans are here to witness the top drivers in the world and celebrities that come here to compete in this time-honored tradition of America's biggest off-road spectacle. This is the Polaris Razor Mint 400 presented by BF Goodrich Tires, and you are watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Hey everybody, Sal Masekela here, your host of the Red Bull Signature Series, and allow me to welcome you once again to just beyond the outskirts of the bright lights and sounds of Vegas, to the dusty desert landscape near Prim on the Nevada-California border. In off-road racing, it does not get any more prestigious here in the USA than the all-week celebration that takes place in downtown Las Vegas surrounding the Mint 400. And today, culminates with a race on a course that is made up of three laps, a 125-mile circuit of punishing rock and boulders, and unless you are up front and running all alone, you get filled with blinding and suffocating dust. Yay! Now nearly running a half century starting back in 1967, there are 350 teams. Over 50 of them are in the trick truck class. You got off-road racing's elite names, Menzies, Lofton, McMillan, Baldwin and Rob McCachran. They're all here to name a few. And standing between these drivers along with their crews is the rock, sand, and silt along with the scorching high desert sun of the Mojave Desert. And by the time it's all over, the final miles of the race, they are raced in the pitch black dark. The green flag is about to drop, so we're gonna check in for more on this format with Lee Diffie and the Motorsports Hall of Famer, the legend, Mr. Ricky Johnson. Sal, thank you very much. And what a sight here in Prim, Nevada, as you mentioned, tens of thousands to see the Mint 400, the biggest off-road race in North America with the unlimited and limited classes. And Ricky, what are some of the key format and rules we need to keep an eye out for today? Well, it's a three-lap race format of 125 miles each. Drivers start two by two, except for the defending champion and fast qualifier, Justin Lofton. And speaking of Justin, let's hear what he had to say before things got going. You know, I think we're going to pre-run the first lap and see what happens. And then uh, after that, you know, when it starts feeling good and starts feeling a little uh, a little frisky, we're going to get after it and see what this uh, Jimco Fox Shocks uh, BF Goodrich uh, trick truck can do and hopefully put some time on the guys behind us. Great shot here, Ricky, of the main pit. This is where we're going to see so much go down today over those three 125-mile laps. Well, Lee, the track is absolutely perfect. I ran the course this morning and it was like chocolate cake. So the best driving conditions possible, but today it is going to deteriorate unbelievably. And the first to go is the fastest qualifier and the reigning champion, Justin Lofton. As we watch Justin's right hand, he's one of the few guys in the trick truck class that runs a manual transmission. On the high speed, the manual is the way to go, but in the tight technical, it's the automatic all the way. Next up on the line, a couple of mid-400 champions, Andy McMillan, right alongside Bryce Menzies. And some controversy here, Ricky, because Menzies didn't qualify as fast as McMillan, but he got that preferred inside line. He's got the inside line, and Bryce is one of the guys that obviously has won many short course championships, so this is his advantage. As we see him come into the first turn, he's got an advantage over Andy, but we can watch his, his co-driver is not too happy with that. Brady Thompson being quite animated as Bryce Menzies has the early lead over Andy McMillan. It's on you, I got no GPS. Follow him. 
and you hear the co-driver say they have no GPS. Lee, at this point, they're on a new part of the track. They've laid out everything except this side-by-side. -side. Jason Voss in the 35, and he faces off against Jesse Jones in the 76 KMC Wheels trick truck. Jesse with a hard run across the outside, but Jason with a very strong run. It's going to be, I think the inside's going to have the advantage coming into this next left-hander. Awesome on board, and it shows Voss with the early upper hand. Derek Spruill on the inside and Rob Mack on the outside. Rob with a great run. If Rob gets the whole shot from the outside, he'll be the first trick truck to make it happen. Rob McCachron, off-road legend, has won everything except for this. In his home state, he is yet to win the Mint 400. Great start from Rob Mack, though. Rob pulling off his short, showing his short course skills and getting a great run. But watch Rob, he's so smooth behind the wheel. He's done everything there is to do when it comes to off-road racing. First class 1500 sighting. This is Pat Dean up against Cody Parkhouse. Parkhouse in the red. These are unlimited buggies, but still they have a transaxle in the back. So the motors sit in the back of the car. So it is a slightly lighter car and different suspension characteristics than the trick trucks. Josh Daniels and Ray Griffith about to start. Here they go. Josh Daniels has that big motor. He's running a twin turbo with a thousand horsepower, and you can see how hard it pulls off the line. The Danzio turbo-powered Ford Geyser Brothers trick truck. Outside line, Rob Mack style, and has the early up. And watch how hard it pulls. Basically the same motor configuration, but this is with twin turbos. Closest to view is Sam Berry in the Class 1 buggy alongside Lala Laguna. Sam Berry with a single seat, a much lighter package, but if you're driving all by yourself and you have a flat or any problems, you have to fix it yourself. Also, you have to navigate all by yourself. We see Lalo on the outside, got pretty much smoked by Sam when it came to that start, but when it comes to navigating, Sam's all on his own. Nick Nelson is at the line and he is up against Ryan Pullman. Both drivers with a very even start, so there could be some bumping and banging. So this is the one part of desert racing that's very much like short course, and you want to get out in front. Right now we see that it's very watered and great dirt, but you still want that advantage off the start. Cameron Steele on the far side in the green and black trick truck, and closest to view is Brett Serapis, the teenage sensation. Cameron Steele with a great hole shot on the outside, but Brett comes in hard, gets up on the bicycle, gets control of it, gets back on the ground, no harm, no foul. Let's scoot up the track and take a ride with our physical leader, Justin Lofton. Oh, this is on board with Cameron Steele and he's come to a stop. For some reason, Cameron uh, either lost ignition or something like that, but they'll have dual ignitions. Here we see Brett Serapis going around the outside and Cameron's got to be kicking himself because he did so well in the whole shot, got out in front of Brett, but now gave the spot back. Things are only just getting going in the Polaris Razor Mint 400, a part of the Red Bull Signature Series. We're now in the 49th year of racing the Great American Off-Road Race. It's only 45 minutes by plane from LA, or five hours in the car, so the Mint has always attracted Hollywood stars. Over the years, the likes of legends like Steve McQueen, Chuck Norris, Vanna White, even Wonder Woman Linda Carter, and last year, Patrick Dempsey, they've all raced here. And really, what's not to like with high adrenaline racing coupled with the sinful Vegas nights? It's a dream for the fans as well, because they get to enjoy a week of access to the teams and some truly incredible racing. Well, Sal, you said it, incredible racing, and it's an incredible display right now in the Joshua Tree Forest by Justin Lofton, the leader. And you can see how the dirt is absolutely perfect at this point. This morning, it's getting drier and drier, but right now, Lofton has a perfect view. Riding with Bryce Menzies. And there's Andy McMillan, he's not letting him get away. Andy McMillan was the champion of the Mint 400 two years ago and has won multiple other desert races, so keep him in check. Look who else has made a terrific start in fourth place, Jason Voss. He's now in the dust of McMillan and Bryce. On board with fifth place, Jesse Jones. At race mile 18, Justin Lofton, very clean and running a strong pace. And Ricky, when you're as fierce a competitor as Bryce Menzies is, when you can see the leader, how motivating is that? The dust out the right side is the physical leader, Justin Lofton, and just like a shark smells blood, when a driver sees dust, he starts to attack. Bryce Menzies has won the Mint 400 before. 
He lives in Nevada and would like to do it again. So too is the case for Andy McMillan. Dealing with the dust, but not too bad at the moment. Right now, the drivers are just starting to get a feel for it because this is their first time by. Here we see Jesse Jones, his co-driver is letting him know to the right and to the left using hand signals as well as audio signals. Lofton, with exactly the view he wants, no dust ahead. Rob Mack with a very clean pace. Look for Rob to get faster and faster as the race goes on. He's one of those guys that has so much experience, he's not gonna go out and try to win this the first lap. Look at the speeds now being displayed by Bryce Menzies, over 100 miles per hour. This is our check-in with Cody Parkhouse at race mile 18. The class one buggies run really fast as it gets rougher. They have the articulation of the back wheels as well. The trick trucks have a solid rear axle, so it's both wheels are spinning the whole time where the class one buggies, they sort of articulate side to side. In some cases, it's a smoother ride. Rick, which do you prefer, the view that Bryce Menzies has or the view that Justin Lofton has? Do you want that free air out front? Well, we, we deal, we're dealing with corrected time as well. So if you're close enough and you're leading by corrected time, it doesn't matter as long as you win. Lalo Laguna has caught up with the 12th place Sam Berry. This is Sam on board. Now riding with Laguna. Lalo comes up, gives him a little tap, and didn't quite get close enough. Trying to hit Sam, but not too hard. You don't want to hurt the driver in front of you, but you can see Sam Berry running very, very hard in that single seat buggy. As he gets off to the side, Lalo goes by and clips his rear wheel. You see a hard hit. So Sam did the right thing, got out of the way to let Lalo run because that truck weighs about 2,000 pounds more. So Laguna now has clear space as we ride with Cam Steele. Right now, I'm, I'm just imagining the camera's going, whatever went wrong, but now we see Brett get off to the side. He, he led him by, so very, very smart move by this young racer. Checking in with Andy McMillan. Third place at the moment. Left rear tire, bud. Left rear? Yes, sir. No way. Oh, no, McMillan has a flat tire. How's it feel? You hear the frustration on Andy's voice because he knows that he didn't hit anything really hard as we see Justin Lofton exit pit A. Andy McMillan, who knows if he's going to change it or ride it all the way to the pit. What's the best strategy? It all depends on how close you are because you can still keep moving along with a flat, but as we heard, it's not completely flat. It's just going down. Bryce Menzies coming into pit A and observing those slower speed zones. Exactly. you got to get yourself woed down, and they have limiters on there as we listen to Andy come into the pit. So what he's saying there is going to stop them from speeding because they're going off a GPS tracker, not a mechanical speedo. And very fortunate that that happens so close to pit A. Encouraging opening portion of this Mint 400 for Jason Voss. He's in fourth and coming into pit A now. This could be bad news for McMillan. McMillan comes in to change that left rear tire. And it is bad news because Voss has been running a very, very fast pace as we see him squeak by as Andy is in the pit on the left. Get us out of here, guys. I got Jones in the mirror. And here comes Jesse Jones. Jones is on our right side. He's right there. He's going to be right there. He's going to be right there. There you go. You're good. Little love tap by Jesse Jones. He's got to respect it. They give a wave back. They're giving thumbs up. They're ready to go racing. But that was key for Andy McMillan right there. Good job, boys. On your bumper. You're going down, and it's a hard left. Very important for Andy McMillan to take off as soon as he gets there to try to break away from Jesse because Jesse's been a multi-time score champion as well. So all of these guys are the top guns of desert racing. Don't go anywhere. Plenty more when we come back. More exciting action from the Mint 400, part of the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Polaris Razor Mid 400 part of the Red Bull Signature Series. And this is the leader, the physical leader, Justin Lofton, about to make his way onto the Gene Dry Lake Bed at race mile 34. When they hit the lake bed, Lee, they can run up to 140 to 145 miles an hour, depending on the truck, depending on the setup, but we've seen some unbelievable speeds across the dry lake bed. And Lofton has enjoyed an impressive opening run. However, he knows that Bryce Menzies is not too far behind. 
Well, Bryce is actually leading on corrected time, so Bryce is in a great spot, but Bryce is one of those drivers that doesn't like to sit back. He wants to pad his lead as much as he can. Also, if he can catch Justin, he's going to want to pressure him to try to make a mistake, so keep the pressure on. That's Bryce's plan. And using some of his short course experience there, beautiful control. Now we ride with Sam Berry. Sam Berry, one of the few guys still running in a single seat, and now we see Sam pulling over, and as I said before, he has to do all the work himself. This is going to be costly. Sam will lose positions. First sighting hero at race mile 18 of Luke McMillan. Luke McMillan, a very strong young driver in that racer chassis. Look for him at the finish line. Look at Menzies rocketing through this dry lake bed. He's got that Courier power plant, and they just hold it wide open. They don't breathe it. They don't do anything. They'll, it's just like a dyno run, wide open. Just as we said, this flat is going to be costly for Sam Berry. Third place, this is Jason Voss. Jason Voss, he comes from a motorcycle background, so he's very good at reading terrain, but he drives very aggressive. What I like about Jason is that he doesn't really go slow and pace himself. He runs very, very strong all day long. In the 1553 buggy, that's Ray Griffith being overtaken by Lala Laguna. Lalo's had quite a time with the buggies today, uh, so his qualifying was off a little bit, and he has to pass a lot of drivers. Rick, you were talking about speeds. The GPS in Voss's trick truck just said 133 miles per hour. Exactly. Everyone's going to go up and down a little bit, and the forums might... Oh, and here we see Potts go up on his roof and over. He, what he happened is he came in a little bit hot, entered the berm in the middle, it bit him, and over he goes. Looks like a soft roll, but that's going to make a long day. That was at race mile 18. Fifth place, Jesse Jones now enters the dry lake bed. Jesse Jones, as he's bouncing around, he has to work his way through the dust. You can see the co-driver telling him right and left once again, not just audio signals, but hand signals as well. So you might think that the race is over, but these trucks are so tough, they roll pots back onto his wheels, they'll undo it, they'll make sure that they didn't get too much oil up in the up in the valve covers, and then they'll take off again. But now we see Sam Berry back on course. Pleasing sign for Sam. This is seventh place Derek Spool driving across the lake bed. And Potts finally gets going again. Potts gets going. You see the dirt and everything getting out of there. That, that driver is 16 years old. So you know what? He's going to make a lot of mistakes, but he's got a bright future ahead of him. What are you saying? There's dust up ahead for Justin Lofton. That's because of this UTV competitor. But Justin makes quick work of that. Well executed. That's one of the Baja lights. And a former Supercross and motocross racer, Damon Bradshaw, is out there. And he's also a monster truck racer as well. So he's trying his hand at the Mint 400. As we see Bryce, he's starting to pass some of the UTVs. Now, the race earlier today, some of the stragglers are still out on the course, so the drivers have to deal with them as well. So they have to be very careful because they're twice the weight, and they got to be careful not to hit them too hard. See Lalo Laguna running wide. How easily is that done, Rick? Well, you come in, you miss your mark by one foot coming in. It'll be three to ten feet on the exit, so you have to be cautious. But as we said, Lalo didn't qualify as well as he wanted to, so he's having to make up ground now. Quick shot there of Cameron Steele in 13th. He's been playing the catch-up game ever since the start. And this is Sam Baldy coming through race mile 18. So what I love about the Mint 400 is they qualify the buggies and the trucks together. And however you qualify is how you line up. If the buggy is the fastest, and we've seen them win this race before, they start up in the middle of it. So it's a, a lot of times it's a clash. What do you think is better, a uh, class one buggy or a trick truck? How were you at executing moves like this? How patient did you have to be? You have to be very patient. As I said, Jason right now is coming up on Damon Bradshaw. Damon gets out of the way. Jason goes by. You don't want to hit him because uh, Jason has been that guy in that truck before. He came from spec truck. He came from motorcycles. He's done a lot of the racing. So you've got to respect your competitors. Riding on board with Dan McMillan. Dan, very consistent and very fast. Another one of the McMillans. That's actually the cousin to Andy McMillan and the brother of Luke McMillan. And job done, pass made. Stay with us to see if Justin Lofton can stay out in front here in the 2016 Polaris Razor Mint 400, a part of the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series and the Polaris Razor Mint 400. I am your host, Sal Masichella, and in the past, I've gotten to compete in the limited class at this race twice. 
Now, unlimited means no restrictions. Anything goes as far as modifications to the vehicle. Go as fast as you want. In the limited class, competitors' vehicles have restrictions on their design, power, and suspension, which means a level playing field, and it all comes down to the skill of the drivers. Not only do these drivers still have to face the same punishing desert heat and conditions, they also have to get up and race at the crack of dawn. Sal, that's right. Up at the crack of dawn and six plus hours of brutal head-to-head -head competition. And this year was full of battles. In class 10, early on, it was Roger Starkey and Jason Coleman who fought all morning for positions along with TJ Tulls and Nick Carolan, who drove the new 2400 class based on a Ford production EcoBoost turbocharged motor. Jeffrey Cooley looked fast early on, but suffered some mechanical issues. The Min 400 race course pulled no punches. After some intense back and forth battling, the 1067 Roger Starkey took the win in class 10, with Tulls and Coleman taking second and third behind him. But it was the 2406 car of Nick Carolan that beat them all, winning the limited race overall. I had the pleasure of running with Rod Lewis in the Spitfire Racing Sportsman vehicle. The track in the morning was unbelievable. Did you have fun, RJ? Absolutely, but not as much fun as Justin's having right now. One of the key sections on this 125-mile loop that they must do all three times, the Fox Proving Grounds. As you can see, the drivers, it's got a combination of different size bumps, so we're going to see how the setup works for different vehicles. Some are a little lower. See, We see Bryce that stays a little bit flatter than Justin, but Justin had a very smooth run. Looks like uh, Bryce is running it a little bit harder as we see the rocks bouncing off the side. How key is rhythm through there? You have to be on par there. This is Jason Voss. Let's take a ride. A wild ride. You can just watch the energy in the tires and see how much harder Jason is running at this time. I think Bryce knows that he's in the lead and he's not going to push it too hard, but Jason is behind a little bit. He's going to be working harder. Ricky, you mentioned pushing hard, and that's what Cameron Steele's been doing right from the start as he presses to try and get up into the top 10. One of the nicest guys from the Desert Assassin is on a charge right now, but Andy McMillan, the truck looks very good, very balanced. He doesn't seem to be jumping too high, and you can, once again, watch the energy in the tires. You can see how hard a driver is pushing. Remember earlier we saw Steele get past the 19-year-old Brett Serapis. Here he is. I had the pleasure of racing with his father, Steve Serapis, who's the sponsor, obviously, of Brett. But Brett was one of the most dominant drivers in 6100 and is now one of the top drivers in Trick Truck. Here's Rob Mack. Taking a look at Rob's truck. Rob knows this desert because he's lived out here. He's been running buggies his whole life. This is his neighborhood. Justin running very strong, not too high up in the berm, not pushing it too hard, but still running a blistering pace. Now his turn for the first time through the Fox Proving Grounds in seventh place is Derek Spruill. Spruill running a very strong pace. Looks like he's jumping a little bit farther than everybody else. He obviously is pushing it hard. Bryce Menzies already at race mile 60. Second physically, but first on corrected time. David Bradshaw and Leo Donald in the Baja Light trying to finish their race, but Parkhouse is charging hard. Doing good to stay up with this lead trick truck pack. You can watch how the, the rear tires move independently, and that's the difference between a class one buggy and a trick truck. The run you've seen Voss have today here in the 35 trick truck, do you think he's got a chance at a podium? Anything can happen. They're only halfway through lap one, and they got to do this three times. And don't forget, they have to finish at night. Lalo Laguna now through the Fox Proving Grounds. Lalo running very strong. Lalo is one of those drivers that is always on the gas, whether it be stadium trucks or Baja Racing or here at the Mid 400. Oh, look at this dust for Andy McMillan. Andy McMillan is so impressive because he doesn't run a whole schedule like Rob Mack or Bryce Menzies, who run short course and desert. Cameron Steele making his way towards the Fox Proving Grounds. Whatever glitch he had at the beginning of the race, he's got it fixed and running strong. We're now on board with Jesse Jones. And Rick, we see him there using that turning brake. Yeah, what that does, it's like an emergency brake, so it locks up the rear. So when they come into the corners, because it is a solid rear axle, it wants to push really bad, and there's so much weight towards the back that if you use that handbrake, what it does, it locks up the back brakes and helps you turn. You used the phrase a little earlier about pushing hard. I don't think anyone pushes as hard as Rob McCachron. Here we see Josh Daniels working his way through the dust, trying to get back into the front as he pushes the driver by. I love these onboards they just depict. They really underscore the brutal, the aggressive nature of the mid 400. 
as the physical leader, Justin Lofton, enters the rigid lights quarry. What about this section of the course, Rick? It's very tight, very technical with a lot of off cameras. And in these trick trucks, you can't see too well over the hoods. So there's a lot of blind spots for the drivers. Now the question is, does Justin hold back, create some dust and hope that Bryce gets a flat? Or does he just keep running hard, trying to push Bryce? Only Justin knows. Leader in the class 1500, Cody Parkhouse at race mile 60. Now it's Bryce Menzies' turn to head into the rigid lights quarry. Jason Voss making it past some of the lap traffic and still trying to chase down Bryce Menzies. Hard right. So they'll run their siren to let them know. I always think that they do that just so that they, if any spectators see any bumping and banging going on, that they can report that they did honk before they hit them. Running hard out front, Justin Lofton. This is the Mid 400, part of the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back. This is the Polaris Razor Mint 400, a part of the Red Bull Signature Series. And we take you heading to pit B, where leader Justin Lofton has just left. Well, Justin said at the opening of the show that he's going to feel it out, see how the truck is working. But now he is on mark. He is running hard. So some of these drivers are going to make notes as they go, because Bryce Menzies is one of those drivers that did not take the parade lap this morning. So Pete Mortensen is laying down dangers as the race goes on. So the next lap, he'll have those markers in his GPS. Good motivation. The voice you heard was the pit captain letting them know that everything looks good on the truck, all the wheels are tracking, everything looks great. Sam Baldy in 35th place, working his way through the Fox Proving Grounds. For Justin Lofton though, RJ, what do you think about being the physical leader, but he knows that Menzi is close, and you know what a fierce competitor Lofton is in the various disciplines of racing that he has been in and been successful in. Bryce Menzies just will not go away. We see Bryce running really hard, probably about 100 miles an hour at this point, dancing through bumps that are about three foot tall. But it, for Justin Lofton and Bryce Menzies, as we see Cameron still go by, you have to race your own race. And this guy, Rob McCachron, is the king of that. He doesn't let anybody get into his head. He runs his own pace and lets the race come to him. Rob Mack has just left pit B. This is Steve Oligas, the local Ford dealer through the Fox Proving Grounds, trying to make the top 20. Derek still running very strong and right in the middle of this race. And on corrected time, he's less than two minutes behind. Another guy trying to make up time is Tim Herbst through the Fox Proving Grounds. The Herbst family obviously does so much in Vegas and Tim, one of the, one of the brothers that's out here at every desert race. Pete Mortensen checking the GPS, checking the temps, making sure that everything is right so Bryce can focus on just the track and racing hard. Plenty of roost from the trick truck of Lalo Laguna trying to keep it on track. And not doing a very good job at this point. Went to the left, to the right, but now back on track. Here we're watching in class 15, Pat Dean, a local that has won so many races out here. It's uh, a little bit hard to keep count. Into the rigid lights quarry, and this is a top 20 competitor. This is Abdali Lopez. Teammate to Lalo Laguna, it running very strong. A little further back, Tracy Graff making his way out of the Fox Proving Grounds. While RJ, we're getting to the end of the first lap. Justin Lofton and Bryce Menzies, it has been quite the battle. The dike jump is coming up, here it is. What's your assessment of that opening lap? There's a little bump coming right after that, so some of the guys are gonna try to jump it. Everyone else is gonna go short, but for uh, Lofton, perfect first lap and Bryce Menzies as well as you see him oh he cases it very very hard and took it right in the chassis so that probably knocked the wind out of the driver and co-driver. Justin Lofton has made the decision with his team to pit early and Bryce Menzies does not. Steve Menzies and Menzies Motorsports love to play these games maybe run a little bit longer and now they're making up time in the pit. Dyke jump for Jason Voss, running third. If you saw Jason, he cleared the little bump afterward that uh, Bryce cased so hard, so made up a little bit of ground right there. It might not seem like a lot, but about five seconds at the end of the day. Voss, too, has chosen to pit as we ride with Andy McMillan. Andy McMillan comes over the dip jump and lands with the front wheel very hard right into that G-load. Now imagine the truck is 6,200 pounds. You double that G, he's landed with 13,000 pounds of force. So two of the top three have decided to pit early on board with Jason Voss. And there is the trick truck of Andy McMillan going by in the pit. 
but Andy's gonna have to make his pit as well. So he comes in, so this is gonna give Voss a chance to get back by. So depending on how quick you see Andy taking on rear tires, uh, Voss is gonna make his way back past. First lap well, of three laps for the mid 400, so this course is going to continue to deteriorate as the day goes on. So he's just keeping track position, keeping clean, not getting out of that truck, and just you know, stay with the pack, and it'll start thinning out later in the day. Some wise words from Andy McMillan's dad, Scott. You also see Jesse Jones with a hard land off there as well, but. That is a, the second of three generations. Started with Corky, then it went to Scott and Mark, and now we see Andy, Luke, and Dan McMillan all out there racing. So Cody Parkhouse with a good leap. Rob McCachran as he headed over the dike jump, and this is seventh place Derek Spruill at the Prim infield. Plenty of action through this main pit. We see Rob Mack, who didn't qualify as well as he would have liked, but now is working his way through the field methodically. So very, very fast paced by Rob Mack. Oh, very hard hit once again. As we said, as the drivers push it, there's a sweet spot. If you come into it hard, it is going to buck you really, really bad. Wow. Parkhouse not afraid to throw it. So too for Serapis as he goes through the razor arch. Now this is Rob McCachran and Jones. Rob Mack using the berm to his advantage with a very strong move. And with that, moves into fifth overall, chasing McMillan, Voss, Lofton, and leader Bryce Menzies. Stay tuned for more racing with the 2016 Polaris Razor Mint 400, a part of the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series and the Polaris Razor Mint 400. I am your host, Sal Masekela. Now, the 900 horsepower factory team Trick Trucks, they get all the fanfare and shine as they roar across the desert, helicopters in chase, piloted by the top drivers in the world. But becoming just as popular, the UTV class. You see, these are all-terrain vehicles that are accessible to you and I, and that we can go down to the showroom, buy one, and we're instantly enjoying the great outdoors. However, don't let the size fool you. The UTVs, just as competitive as the big boys. Sal, that's right. The UTV competition was fierce this year and featured two main classes, turbo and naturally aspirated, both vying for Mint 400 glory. Mitch Guthrie Jr. showed signs of greatness as he battled the pack, as did standouts Mark Burnett, Brandon Schuler and UTV world champion Brandon Sims, who led the race early in the turbo class. Wayne Matlock applied pressure to Sims all day long though. Justin Lambert of Cognito Motorsports led his class most of the race, while guys like Cody Raiders gave chase. But it was Brandon Sims and Justin Lambert, both factory drivers for Polaris, that set a blistering pace and pushed way out ahead of the chase pack. Lambert had a scary moment and broke down a mere 20 yards from the finish line. But in a display of incredible sportsmanship, his Polaris teammate Sims helped him push his car across the line. Sims took the chequered flag and was the fastest UTV on course today, taking first in the turbo class, while Lambert finished third overall and first in the naturally aspirated class. A remarkable day of racing for these young Polaris UTV racers. The great thing about these UTVs is it's bringing people off the couch and to the races over 60 entries. Dan McMillan, cousin to Andy, as RJ was saying earlier, heads out into the Joshua Tree Forest on his second lap. Now riding with Voss. Whoa, whoa! Voss off to the side, obviously going to stop and change the tire. This is going to be a great break. Andy McMillan still running a strong pace. Jason Voss off to the left. And Ricky, you were talking earlier about the McMillan dynasty. This is Dan McMillan's younger brother, Luke. Both Luke and Dan running that racer chassis that Dale Dondell has designed and qualified many times up front. So a very fast chassis under those two McMillan brothers. Oh, and Jason Voss is just watching them go by. This is Charlie McDowell off the dike jump and over. We talked about it. If you hit in the wrong spot, when it comes to being a sweet spot, it's the anti. And what it did is it bucked Charlie right up. He had no control of it and into the guardrail. How frustrating is this for Jason Voss? He's just watched Jesse Jones go by as well. 
As you hear the motor rev up and back down, what's happening is he's breaking traction. As they go across the dry lake bed, there's certain spots that are a little bit softer than others, and then the background, the back tires are breaking traction and then gaining traction, and your speed can fluctuate sometimes 15 to 20 miles an hour, depending on the wind. That was pleasing to see Charlie McDowell and his co-driver out of the car and going again. Race mile 46, and this is the first time today that we've seen Justin Lofton actually have to do some chasing on road. Remember my comment about sharks and blood and drivers and dust? Now Lofton is hunting down Bryce Menzies. That's Andy McMillan charging hard. He feels he's got a shot at this one. Andy running very strong, but you got to make sure that you stay on track because the sidewall is the weak spot. As we watch Jason Voss go through, as he gets up a little high like that and bounces side to side, that's where you can knock a flat because the tires are designed to run over the rocks. They're not designed to slide into them. This is Derek Spruill, who also passed Jesse Jones in pit A across the dry lake bed. Now Rob McCachran, he got past Jones on track, got past Jason Voss when Voss was stranded. Look out for Rob McCachran. Andy McMillan still running a strong pace. Do not count him out. RJ, it's fascinating how this race has changed in complexion. And for Justin Lofton, now he's looking up ahead at the dust trail of Bryce Menzies, exactly what Menzies was doing to him on the opening lap of this Mint 400. You hear that hard shift, that's a manual transmission, Lee. So Justin is going back and forth between fourth and fifth gear, where Bryce Menzies got the automatic, where he'll run a Turbo 400 prepared by Kevin Croyer, where he'll just run second and third gear all day long. But you can see the pace of Lofton. He's running right on the edge. He wants to try to push Bryce Menzies to make a mistake. But I've been teammates with Bryce, and I've watched him win many a championships. He does not make many mistakes. But if any do, that man there, the two-time Mint 400 winner, Andy McMillan, is in a prime position. At this point of the race, it's anybody's race, but you got to remember how physical this race is. So the guys have to make sure that they keep up on their nutrition, make sure they keep on their hydration. How much do you think this track has deteriorated from lap one to now? Unbelievably, the track as it gets raced on, the silt pockets get deeper, the ruts get deeper, and the drivers are kicking rocks off from side to side. So the track gets worse, but the knowledge goes up. Let's see if Bryce Menzies can hold on to this lead and build up enough time at pit B before Justin can catch him. Find out when we return with more racing from the Mint 400, part of the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Polaris Razor Mint 400, a part of the Red Bull Signature Series. And in the Red Bull Trek truck, Bryce Menzies, leader of the Mint 400, finds traffic in Taylor Mills. We saw this happen to Justin Laughlin when he was out in front catching other drivers. So it's a, a fine balance. Once again, you have to drive your own race. You cannot worry about anybody until the last couple miles. But right now, Bryce Menzies is catching some of those stragglers that are trying to finish this morning's race and also some of the trick trucks and class one cars that have problems. Jesse Jones. We see Jesse, his hood's flapping, so obviously he's been bouncing some guys out of the way. Jesse Jones, one of those drivers that once he gets behind you, you do not want to stay in his way. Look at those colossal roosts from Bryce Menzies. Not only underscoring the territory, but the immense power of these 900 horsepower monsters. As Cody Parkhouse flashes through, he's in hot pursuit of Jesse Jones. Hey, RJ. Menzies' truck there was wiggling side to side. Something wrong, or that just shows how hard it is to pull these monsters up? Well, actually, he's on the asphalt, Lee, and that's the one place where you have consistent terrain underneath you, so he's doing a physical check as the driver, so he doesn't have to worry about anybody looking. He can feel everything that's going on underneath the truck. Brakes, steering, and transmission. It's the guy we're talking about, Bryce Menzies, as he makes his way through the quarry. Second place, Justin Lofton. Eyes on the prize, keeping Menzies inside. And we haven't seen Cameron Steele for a while. Here he is. Cameron's still running very strong. Obviously, whatever that gremlin was at the beginning of the race got that fixed, but Justin Lofton running very strong. You can see that he is not holding back at all. On the short course, you can make a little time, but you can lose a lot of time. A lot of the drivers have to come in. It's very hard gravel. It's got a lot of traction, but then it goes through sections where it's marbly and very loose, so you have to be patient and not lose time. 
Menzies heads towards pit B where we expect him to stop. There's Andy McMillan. This is Jason Voss working his way through the rigid lights quarry. This is a rugged section. Look at Jesse Jones on the inside of Sproul here. Sproul turns in a little bit, but then the back wheels come off. He gets a hold of the edge and over he goes. That is not going to be one happy driver, but I'm really not going to call foul on Jesse Jones. That was just a racing incident. Mint 400 leader, Bryce Menzies making his way into pit B. Now what's Lofton thinking here? Lofton once again has to stay in his own head because if you overdrive the truck, you beat it up a little bit too much as we're watching Bryce Menzies come in to make his pit stop, you got to make sure that you stay in your own head. Remember Bryce Menzies did not stop. Oh, and look at this. These guys are not happy. There's going to be some words in the Jones pit after the race, I'm gonna guarantee that. Derek Spruill and his co-driver not happy. Justin Lofton makes his way into pit B. Remember Menzies stopping and there goes Bryce. As you can see, Bryce accelerates hard so you can get on the gas hard, but you just can't exceed the speed limit. So it doesn't matter how fast you get up to that speed, just don't pass it. Ricky, what are the benefits for Menzies going longer on that initial run? Well, some of the drivers don't like the fluctuation in weight because the percentage of front to rear weight changes drastically. But Bryce races Pro 2, Pro 4, and also Trophy Truck. So what he'll do is he'll just adapt his driving style to the weight. That's Derek Spruill has been righted and is able to continue. Let's hope he can get back to racing. This is third place Andy McMillan. And you can look at the trucks and see how hard a driver has been going. And Andy's truck doesn't even has some dust on it, no scratches, so he's staying on course and doing exactly what he needs to do. But this race between the two front guys is very tight at this point. Leaving pit B, and we are fascinated by this battle up front for the 2016 Polaris Razor Mint 400, a part of the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back. You're watching the 2016 Polaris Razor Mint 400, a part of the Red Bull Signature Series. From Prim, Nevada, you're looking at a man who lives in Las Vegas, Nevada, not too far from here, and that is Bryce Menzies leading the way in his Red Bull Geyser trick truck. Is he feeling the pressure from this man, Ricky Johnson? Justin Lofton is physically second, and he's also second in corrected time. So Justin has to pass Bryce and make time to get ahead corrected. So he's got a lot of work ahead of him. It was a stroke of luck there, too, that there were so many lines. So what's such a wide area for Lofton going through that wall of dust. And look at this, Menzies again in excess of 100 miles an hour. Cameron's still now starting to get the hang of the track and going to start pushing harder and harder. He does understand, though, that it's getting rougher and rougher and the shocks are getting heated up, so the truck is going to deteriorate a little bit, but he does know where he's going on the track. Andy McMillan at race mile 81, and what a day it's been for youngster Brett Serapis. They obviously had to do some work on Brett's truck, but he's doing a great job as a rookie here in the trick truck class. Into the prim dry lake bed goes Bryce Menzies. Did most of the first lap chasing and most of this second lap leading. What does his team think? Bryce just pitted at uh, pit B, and he's still first on the road. And so if things go right, we shouldn't even stop here. It should just go by for a visual and he's got to stretch out a little bit of time, but being out front, we should be okay, I hope. That is smiling Ralph Chadwick, self-proclaimed king of the 1600 cars. So, <laughs> great report on what's going on with Bryce Menzies by Ralph Chadwick. And that was a wild ride through the thumpers with Jason Voss after that earlier stop. He's running in fifth now as Lofton enjoys the prim dry lake bed. Josh Daniels with that thousand horsepower trick truck running really strong and Jesse Jones as we've seen has had a lot of battle today he's missing some fenders loose hood and he's taking another driver for a ride oh no something has happened to Jason Voss again co-driver out gonna assess the damage but that's so disheartening because you work so hard and you make so much ground and then you have to give it all right back Nirvana native BJ Baldwin didn't qualify all that well for this year's Mint 400, but has been picking his way through the field nicely. And now Jesse Jones is working his way back through the field. We saw that he's had some trouble losing a fender, loose hood, but he's still back on track and starting to work his way through the field. Here we see him get back past Jason Voss. In eighth place is Lalo Laguna. 
and taking an adventurous line here to get by a UTV. You can see how much dust the UTVs bring up, so the track is just getting more dustier and dustier. Now, now you see also see the shadows are getting longer and longer, so it's harder for those drivers to see the ground. Looking good through the Polaris Razor Arch. However, the day is getting worse for Jason Voss. Justin Laughlin running very strong, and now we see Voss's co-driver getting back in. And as he starts to roll, what the driver will do is get rolling. Once they're clipped in, that's when the driver will go full speed. So it's not all lost on Voss. He's dropped to seventh place. We'll see what the remainder of this race holds as we check in with Cody Parkhouse. As we see Bryce Menz, he's with Prim Nevada in the background. He's finishing lap two, getting ready to start lap three. And this is a section where it's a lot like a playground for the drivers. Not very rough, not very fast, but big bowl burns. And when you come into the Prim infield, as it's known, Ricky, how motivating is that? Well, you know that you're close, that people are right there, because when you get out on the other side of the desert, you, it's illegal for your crew to come to you. That oh, You can only have a best in the desert official tow you out. So you feel much more secure when you can see Prim in the background. Race mile 81, Brett Serapis now going through the thumpers. And look, there's the Menzies team looking at their man and saying, yep, everything looks in good order. BJ Baldwin started to get faster and faster. As we said, he didn't qualify where he wanted, but he's starting to pick up the pace. Main pit for the last time for Justin Lofton heading into the third and final 125 mile loop. And we see Andy McMillan right on the back fender of Justin Lofton. So this race is still very tight, but they're going into the night. And Rick, how tight? Those four guys at the top of this race are separated on corrected time by less than a minute. And a heartbreaker for Jesse Jones. Anytime they got the hood off the truck, Lee, it is not good. On a day that's been spectacular for many reasons for Jesse Jones, but this may be terminal. We see belts, we see wrenches flying. The co-driver is not happy. Race leader, Bryce Menzies. And it has been a blistering day for the driver of the Red Bull truck. And he leads the way, heading into the final lap here in the Mint 400 over Justin Lofton and Rob McCachran in third. Here's Sal back in the Red Bull Signature Series studio. Thank you, Lee. Wild racing as usual. And with over 40,000 spectators and 350 off-road teams, you think it's possible to actually have a conversation? Yes. Join and follow the Red Bull Signature Series on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or Snapchat. Any way you get down socially, the hashtag is Mint400. Or you can go to RedBullSignatureSeries.com, where we have even more exclusive content for you about this event and our entire schedule for the year. Plus, you can also download the Red Bull TV app where you can watch this show and every episode from every season of the SIG series. Plenty more racing coming up for you on the great American off-road race. You are watching the Polaris Razor Mint 400, only on the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back. This is the 2016 Polaris Razor Mint 400, a part of the Red Bull Signature Series. And at this time of the day, Ricky, Day goes to dusk, goes to night. It's the final 125 miles of the mid 400. We can see the long shadows, but we still have 125 miles to go. Menzies and Lofton, and another one who has been a key contender today, Jason Voss. Jason used to race cross country motorcycles, and we always had the pit boards, okay, of course. And um, uh, I don't know, I just thought sitting down in his bedroom, I go, I thought that'd be pretty cool to get one for the races and give him encouragement every once in a while. So earlier it said, go for it, Jason. Go, Jason, go. And now he just needs to step on it. And Jason is stepping on it. Stepping on it for sure. After he changed that tire, he had to lose all those positions. Now he's working his way past Cody Parkhouse and trying to chase down Bryce Menzies. In a lot of cases, your mom is out there trying to tell you to be calm, be smooth. But I love how Mrs. Voss is saying, step on it. <laughs> Go for it. And that's exactly what Rob McCachran's doing. He's just gone one position at a time and now running third on the third and final lap. Bryce Menzies with a very strong pace out in front physically, out in front on corrected time. Everything is going perfect at this point. Through the whoops at race mile 44, climb aboard with Voss.
didn't hear much fluctuation on throttle, so definitely Jason Voss is listening to his mother and he's stepping on it. And Lofton is in the attacking mode. It's the final lap, he knows that. How much pressure can he put on Bryce Menzies? Well, they prep these trucks so well, but Pete Morrison, who's also the co-driver, main mechanic, and manager of that team, does everything to it and has 100% confidence that it's gonna run all 400 miles. Look at Justin Lofton through the whoops. He's still got plenty left on this final lap. You can see the shadows and that's deceiving for the drivers because a lot of times when you see a shadow, it means that there's a big bump, but it could mean bushes on the side. So right now, after the beating that these drivers and the trucks have taken, imagine 100,000 miles on your shocks. That's what these, that's the kind of punishment that these guys are putting on their trucks in just 300, 300 plus miles. Gene Dry Lake bed for the class one leader and sixth overall of Cody Parkhouse. It's been a very productive day for Cody. This is Andy McMillan though. We see the ruts are getting deeper and deeper, so in some cases it helps you out, but a lot of times when, a tr when the trucks are banging and sliding back and forth, as you see Bryce slightly get off track, that pulls the rocks in and that's where you can get some of the flats. Did he get off track or he was trying to stay out of the ruts? Only Bryce will know. He'll probably tell you that that was intentional, <laughs> but he's driving it hard nonetheless. And here we see Jason Voss doing the same thing. But there's the problem. The sun is going down, obviously to the west, and the drivers have to deal with that. Now you saw how Menzies went through this heavily rutted section. What do you make of Justin Lofton's line? Well, it looked like Bryce hopped a little bit. It's one of those things that you have to just throttle it and look ahead. When you're driving a trophy truck this fast through whoops that are three, oh. in some cases four feet tall, you can't be absolutely precise. It's like driving a boat. You're gonna swap side to side as we're watching Andy McMillan come through here, but you can be precise enough to keep it on track. And that's what all these drivers are doing, showing unbelievable patience as they drive over 100 miles an hour. Ricky, you know who didn't come through in that sequence was Rob McCachron. Has something happened to Rob Mack? We'll find out. Was that him there? Sure enough, Rob Mack off to the side. We don't know what happened to his truck, but a driver that's been so patient so long, who knows what it was. Sometimes it says they say it's a 30 cent or a $2 part, but anything can take you out when you run a truck this hard. No quit in Justin Laughlin. Remember, he's just trying to be the fifth driver to ever go back to back in the 48 year history of the Mint 400. It's still an offer and it's still an option that's on the table. And when these drivers, I've been in this situation and I've driven this course two years ago and at the last lap, the ruts are so big and oh, we saw Bryce Menzies off to the side. So something has happened to Bryce Menzies truck. As we get a report on that, it's something with the steering. As we see Pete Mortensen out and now looking over the truck, a heartbreaker once again for Red Bull's Bryce Menzies. Two of the biggest names in this year's Mint 400 are out. Sal? Thank you, Lee. The sun is set, and we're in the best part, the final miles to the finish. After long hours in the daylight, the drivers now have to navigate this course in the dark. Can Justin Lofton maintain that lead and become the 2016 champion? We will find out. The finish is in sight in this year's Mint 400. Ricky Johnson, can you believe what we have just seen with Bryce Menzies being knocked out of this race? Well, not just Bryce Menzies, but Rob McCacker, two of the local boys that know this desert better than probably anybody are out. And Justin Lofton is doing a great job, but I, my hat is off to Brett Serapis. He was the champion 6100 last year, and now this is not his debut, but his first year in Trick Truck and is doing a great job. It's been an outstanding day. The truck might not look in the best of shape as Andy McMillan is now into second place through the rigid quarry. And we have to remind you, this man on screen, Justin Lofton, last year's winner, is fast-tracking it to back-to-back -back victories. And now he's physically first, but he doesn't know where everybody is behind him. His crew can tell him different time splits, but he has to run because he's gonna be, the, if he does finish, he'll be the first of the finish line, but he has to make sure that he stays well enough ahead of everybody so he doesn't lose on corrected time. And RJ, the counterpoint to that is this man, Andy McMillan, who's trying to chase him down. And he has won this race in the past, but as I said, he cannot focus on Lofton. He has to run his own race. Here we see Cody Parkhouse off to the side and Brett Serapis working his way past. Third place after at one point in time being as far back as seventh, Jason Voss not giving up without a fight. 
We see Lofton not holding back either because he is very confident in that Jemco Trophy truck that he feels that he can push it 100% all the way to the finish line. And now we see Cody Parkhouse back on track. The other thing we see too, Rick, is that the lights are coming into effect. This is a difficult time of the race. Andy McMillan in the Tesco truck running very strong, but it's Justin Lofton out front and running as hard as he can. He is not holding back one bit. Ricky gave this young man, Brett Serapis, props earlier in the show, and he's as high as fourth, heading to the line. The top, class one, Cody Parkhouse still running very strong as he pushes over the berm. A lot of times you can't see and you don't know what's under that silt, so he just pushes a little bit. We see Voss with no lights and it's starting. the sun is starting to go down. And he's just said farewell to Pit B on his way home. But it's looking really good, very promising for Justin Lofton. Andy McMillan still pushing very hard, and now we see Lala Laguna starting to work his way back up. Or no, that's Abdali Lopez, his teammate, who's now making a charge late in the race. Just got around the 15-29 of Scott Bailey. On board with Jason Voss. Now, some of the drivers, they like driving better at night because they can focus on the terrain in front of them. The lights are so good now from Baja Designs and Rigid and many of the other manufacturers that the drivers can focus on the task at hand. Race mile 105 for Andy McMillan. He is almost there. Justin Lofton crosses the finish line. And for the time being, he is the 2016 Mint 400 champion until we get the corrected time. Exactly. So right now, it's a, you sit and wait. It's a lot like when you're qualifying for a race and you're the first one out. As we see Andy McMillan go by, we'll see what happens on corrected time. And we're about to find out, Rick. It is confirmed. Justin Lofton is a two-time, a back-to-back Mint 400 winner. That's got to be a great feeling because he qualified up front, lost the lead to Bryce Menzies, but fought his way back. And Jason Voss worked his way all the way back to third. So great job by all these drivers. But my hat's off to the champion, Justin Lofton. I thought we were in trouble when we had a on our pitch strategy and Bryce got in front of us. And man, Bryce and Andy and Rob pushed so hard and Jason and it's so unbelievable how fast a pace it was, but the course was amazing. We got that little bit of rain last night and made for one hell of a race. And I can tell you, TV is going to have an amazing story to tell on how this race unfolded. So hats off to everyone that is part of this deal. And uh, I'm happy to be here for Fox, BF Goodrich Tires. I guess I got a couple checks coming and uh, hey, here we are. There's the winner, Justin Lofton, with his signature moment. How did he do it? Well, Justin Lofton put himself in a position to win by throwing down a remarkable qualifying run the day before the race. Qualifying first, starting the race first, and had clean air and no pressure on the first lap of the race. It came down to seconds, and Justin made his Red Bull signature moment before it even started. So McMillan and Voss chase Lofton home for solid podium finishes. Cody Parkhouse in seventh overall, the best in class one. What's your take on the day, Rick? I got to throw a shout out to Brett Serapis. Rookie year, finishes in the top five and finishes the mid 400. Great job. Here's Sal back in the Red Bull Signature Series studio. Thank you, Lee. Another great day in the desert. And thanks to all you guys at home for watching the Polaris Razor Mint 400 in Prim near Sin City, Las Vegas, Nevada. 49th running of the Great American Off-Road Race is a wrap and history made once again as Justin Lofton dominates the trick truck class with back-to-back -back wins here at the Mint 400. Also, congratulations to Andy McMillan and Jason Voss, along with their hardworking crews as they round out the podium. Once again, thank you for hanging out with us in the desert on behalf of our entire NBC Sports crew, including Lee Diffie and the legend Ricky Johnson. I'm Sal Masekela, and we will see you next time.